this is a good review problem of a lot of momentum concepts and we're really sticking with just this inelastic collision which makes the math really simple and the point of this is to, to just review the definition of momentum and impulse and how do you compute how much energy is lost in an inelastic collision how do you get the average force felt by each of these objects so it's a simple crash of a two kilogram car 10 meters per second running into a five kilogram car they stick together and that means I have a total mass of seven kilograms moving together at the end of the process and the first thing we're asked to do is find that final velocity so momentum is conserved and I write down my initial momentum as two kilograms times 10 meters per second and that's going to be equal to my final momentum seven kilograms moving together at an unknown final velocity and so I obtain my final velocity and I get 2.86 meters per second part B we know that in every inelastic collision some energy is lost I can find the initial energy by looking at what was moving in the initial state it was only the two kilogram car so one half times two kilograms times V initial squared half of two is just one so I get a nice round number 100 joules and in the final state seven kilograms moving at 2.86 meters per second I'd like to have that written up here for reference and let's get this computed that's 28.6 joules and we'll do a quick subtraction problem that's 71.4 joules missing. Okay, let's look at impulse. So I want the magnitude of the impulse. It doesn't hurt to also get the direction because that's instructive. So impulse is just delta P. Delta always means final minus initial. So each of these cars experiences an impulse or a change in momentum during the problem the two kilogram car for example slowed down and the five kilograms sped up so those both represent impulses let's get the impulse on the two kilogram car and I have Delta P equals P final minus P initial and the final momentum for this car is mass times final velocity and the initial mass times initial velocity and I'll crunch those numbers real quick and I get negative 14.3 kilogram meters per second so it initially had rightward momentum and we're using a plus sign for that and then it gets slowed down so that represents a leftward change in the momentum vector. So I've taken some initial momentum for this guy, P initial, and then I've tacked on a leftward change, which is apparently 14.3 in magnitude. And it results in a final momentum vector shorter than what I began with. So that's why the minus sign is on there. I'll go ahead and finish that thought with a P final. Okay, what about the five kilogram? Delta P is P final minus P initial. P final is five kilograms times 2.86 meters per second minus five kilograms times its initial velocity. Well, I knew that was zero anyway. So I get five times 2.86. And that gives me a positive 14.3 kilograms.
kilogram meters per second. And this is no surprise. We know that during a collision, the two objects have to have opposite impulses. So they have momentum changes that are opposite in sign. And that means the total change in momentum of the system is zero. In other words, momentum is a conserved quantity, which we were operating from from the very beginning. Compute the average force felt by each car. Okay, that's, let me back up a second. I'll do the two kilogram car first. That average force, and it's a vector, but we're taking care of direction with plus and minus signs. It's going to be delta P over delta T. So for the two kilogram mass, it has an impulse of negative 14.3, which means if I take that 14.3 negative, and divide by the time for the collision, which up here in the beginning of the problem was one-tenth of a second, I get negative 143 newtons. It felt a leftward force during the collision, which I hope makes sense. It ran into this thing from the left. It pushed on the 5-kilogram block to the right. The 5-kilogram block pushed back to the left with an average of 143 newtons of force. What about the average force on the 5-kilogram? I take the impulse that it experienced and divide by the amount of time for the process, and that's plus 14.3 over 0.1, which gives me a positive 143 newtons. And of course, we knew this had to be true. When two objects push on each other, the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That's Newton's third law. So this is consistent with Newton's third law, which I like to call N3. And of course, all of this stuff about momentum conservation, it comes from Newton's third law. All right, part E, suppose the collision was actually perfectly elastic instead of inelastic. In other words, the cars bounce off each other with perfect springy bumpers. Well, the difference there is just that no energy would be lost. So I would still have momentum conserved. P initial would be P final. But in addition to that, my kinetic energy would be the same before and after the collision. And solving that problem is a heck of a lot more complex than solving the inelastic collision. I just didn't want to get to that in this review example just yet. And so this is really a concept question. What would the total kinetic energy be after the collision? It would be the same as it was before the collision. It would be 100 joules.